Hello and welcome to the weekly wrap up for this Friday, April 26, 2024. Thanks for tuning in as always. We appreciate your support. Okay, we as always got a lot to cover, so we're just going to dive right into it. We interviewed this week, as you know, with uh, the legendary Bill Holter and got some great information from him. Uh, our friend Nick Veniamen yesterday, we did a presentation with him on the latest on the global currency reset and other mechanisms tied to it. And today we will be interviewing with Rod Steele. Now, starting next week in May, we got a very exciting, line, exciting lineup of people coming on. Uh, returning guest, Greg Manorino. Uh, we are introducing to the channel Jim Willie, who is affectionately known as the Golden Jackass. He's very knowledgeable in the reset. Many of you requested to have him interviewed, so we were able to get him. Thanks to uh, Andy Sheckman from Miles Franklin for the assist on that. And uh, we do have a new affiliate reliance, alliance with Miles Franklin for Precious Metals. So we're excited to be working with them. And then, of course, uh, the wonderful Denise Boland. And I'll tell you, obviously, next week when that comes. OK, here are the latest headline news. Iraq completes 26 agreements with uh, President Erdogan of Turkey and um, starts the virtual offer of goods and services to join the WTO, which, frankly, they could join at any time. This is just a political power play back and forth and a, and a whole timing situation. Uh, the Zimbabwe, or known now as the ZIG, is a step to abandoning the US dollars. We talked about that on the show yesterday with Nick, where Chamisa is going to be working as he becomes the people's choice later this summer as president of Zimbabwe to wrap the Zim bonds and the Zim dollars under the ZIG umbrella and back it solely by gold. Ethiopia and Sri Lanka officially confirmed their desire to join the BRICS. Now we have a long fire sale of layoffs and um, uh, company uh, firings and, and, and cutbacks. So Red Lobster is getting ready to file Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Uh, we have Dollar Tree to cut uh, 600 stores. CVS is closing 900 stores. Walgreens, 150 stores. Outback Steakhouse, 40 stores. UPS to cut up to 12,000 jobs. Citigroup, 20,000 jobs. 1,000 jobs for eBay, Microsoft, 2,500 uh, jobs, Macy's will be closing 150 stores this year, Whirlpool to cut 1,000 jobs, Nike's cutting 2% of their workforce, which as of today is a little over 2,340 jobs, Bristol Myers Squibb cutting 2,200 jobs, Walmart to cut over 2,200 jobs, particularly in the warehousing division, David's Bridal, 9,236 jobs. Southwest Airline is cutting off several destination airport locations and up to 2,000 jobs. Deloitte & Touche, the uh, long-standing consulting company, 1,200 jobs. Discord, 170 jobs. BlackRock, cutting 3% of their workforce, which is a very good thing. It's, it translates to about 600 employees and counting. We're certainly rooting for their demise. Jeep and Dodge lay off 400 workers. And some other good news, Sweden has said no to a cashless society. 83% of their citizens have stood up against that, forcing their main bank, UBS, to have more cash on hand, which has them very angry and disconcerted. So that's a good thing. We need to see that proliferate around the world, and I believe in due time we will. Okay, as of this broadcast, um, gold is at 2348.80, silver $27.32. Brent crude is hanging around $88.87. It was starting to move up, and then the European Central Bank came in and temporarily saved the bond market, which also in turn drove down the, uh, the price of these commodities. But they will come back up. They'll, they'll have the seesaw up and down, up and down as they continue to ascend because they're losing control of the 10-year yield market. You want to be watching the 10-year yield market because as that goes up, that, goes up, that spells implosion for the financial system, which will indefinitely, uh, will, I should say, inevitably make the gold, silver, uh, Brent crude oil, and other commodities absolutely skyrocket, which will find its money the way the money will find its path into cryptos as well as foreign currency. So everything plays off each other as we discussed. Oh, one other thing, probably not a surprise to you, Bed Bath & Beyond is filed for bankruptcy. Just wanted to get that in there. Okay, now we're going to get quickly to some of the questions and comments that I have for you. Uh, so the British gentleman that you saw featured on our show, um, that is not personally somebody I know. That is a friend of Chris, who I want to reiterate, those of you who don't know, this is his channel. I am merely a, uh, I want to say a guest, but I'm a, a passenger on this ride, if you will, for a short period of time. I'm 
Uh, I'm being blessed to have this channel to get this message across, but the origin source of the channel is Chris, which we've had on, on broadcast several times. So you've seen him front of face. Uh, so this is channel. So he does have ultimate right to do what he chooses to do. And this is a good friend of his in Nick Binyamin. So they know this gentleman. They've been friends for years. He's going through a personal situation with his family, which I'm certainly praying for him. And I have a good friend on my side who's going through a very complimentary situation, which is equally uh, disheartening, I think is a good word to use. Uh, so I didn't directly send this video out, even though it had my name on it. I want to just get ahead of it. It's certainly, um, it's not about throwing anybody under the bus. It's just being transparent that Chris put this out because he feels a strong, uh, we'll say humanitarian and heartfelt desire to help his friend out. Um, if you like the story, please comment on it. If you if, if, if it impacts you, please let us know. If you feel like for, for you, you want to donate to this gentleman, that's up to you. I have no dog in that fight. Um, I have no, um, it, it doesn't effectuate me at all. I just wanted to clarify that that message was brought up by Chris because of his personal interest with this fine gentleman and the unfortunate heartbreaking situation he's going through. We certainly pray that God will turn that around and turn something good out of a very bad situation. Okay. So some questions that have been coming up. I don't know if this is for new people in the channel or not, but uh, there's a lot of people out there saying that uh, the Iraqi dinar, the $25,000 notes are going to go to $25. That's not true. That would be a re-denomination. And you know that's not true for the simple fact that why would they try to be joining the World Trade Organization? Why would they be coming back internationally? Why would Sudani go to the U.S.? Why would he meet with Erdogan and get all these oil and gas laws in the strategic framework, which encompasses all the things we've discussed, both here and on Telegram? They wouldn't go through all the trouble of doing the paperwork and going through the political mumbo jumbo to come back to the international stage. They could just simply do a redenomination and that would be it. So that's not going to happen. So um, be careful who you're listening to and use proper discernment. I, I've said that time and again. I'm going to say it again for the people in the chief seats. Uh, somebody asked me about the Zim rates and if I think they're going to be 33 to 50 cents for millions of dollars on the Zim. So we're not about bashing anybody and we're not going to do that. But just because you have a certain amount of people in this community, and I'm sure they mean well, and I'm sure they believe that, that's fine. The point is, is, is to use good discernment and critical thinking. We've said that time and again, just because, and it's an arbitrary number, don't nitpick in the comments, well, it's eight people or 50 people, it doesn't matter. Just because you have a certain amount of people saying it's going to be this way doesn't mean it is. And just because they've been saying it for a long time doesn't make it true. You have to be flexible, open-minded, and ready to be adjusting for variable change. Is this going to happen? We wouldn't be here if it isn't. So that's a rhetorical question. The question is, are you flexible and do you have an open mindset to move and be adaptable to how God moves? Not how man moves, how God moves, right? So is it going to happen the way everyone tells you? High degree of probability it won't. And that's okay, because at the end of the day, God's in control, and he's going to protect his people, of which you are one. So whether it goes left or right, doesn't matter. You're going to be covered in it. But you need to use discernment and critical thinking. A broken clock is right twice a day, as is a broken stopwatch. But I'm not going to wear that on my wrist, would you? So just because somebody is repeating the same thing over and over doesn't make it a fact. Just be open to critical thinking and how God moves and not what certain people in the community are saying or have been saying for a long time, it's going to be that way. And I'm sure if they were, if, if, if they're honest with you, which I'm sure they are, they would tell you to be open to changes as well and just be flexible. So don't be so set on a dogmatic thing that you've been hearing for 10 years that it's this way and that's the only way it's going to be. That's not true. Okay. So, and I think those of you who've lived life long enough know that Nothing goes according to our plans, but it always works out in the end for those who trust and believe and are under God's protection. That's the bottom line there. So I think that pretty much covers everything we need to do in a succinct way. I hope you agree. Oh, oh, there is one more thing. Forgive me. I want to bring up this just came out this morning. Um, Vietnam is continuing to remove their effort to remove corruption and malfeasance, wrongdoing, evil. Uh, Vong Din Hu, pray I said that right, resigns as Vietnam's head of parliament amid more corruption scandals. 
So Vietnam is continuing to crack down on corruption. Very, very good sign. Um, we also want to be watching, as I said before, a reminder, we're coming up into the month of May. So we're watching in May, Iraq is going to really push for an electronic uh, payment system and remove as much of the U.S. dollar for payments, gas stations, grocery stores, as much as possible, and getting people to be on the electronic digital platform, which is aligning with the rest of the world. It has been for quite some time. It brings them up to speed. But we want to watch in May beyond for the China-Taiwan conflict to happen because that frees Vietnam enough out of corruption, along with silver and Litecoin, to rise that currency up. As we see the bond market failing, as I mentioned before, that's going to power all these countries up into their currencies. So that is something to watch for, uh, to see momentum go along with the dinar and the dong. And then we know that from what we shared with you that Zimbabwe looks to be later this summer uh, to complete everything they're doing. So it's a transitional process. We stay in faith. We stay in as much calm and patience as we can. Uh, try not to let um, all the outside information or all the narratives that you hear, don't be as emotional, be as emotionally level as you can and just continue to trust God and he will navigate us to the process so that we can cross the finish line together. That does it for this week. As always, any breaking news, I'll come on and let you know um, as soon as it comes out. Otherwise, have a great, safe, restful weekend, and we'll see you for next week's shows and wrap-up. Take care. God bless.